Hello and welcome to Blue Zone. In this video, we're going to talk about configuring the FSX radios so that you can use it in multiplayer environment. And after we've done configuring it, I will spend a little bit of time in the Superbug and give some pointers how to use it. So let's get the objectives out of the way. So we're going to learn how to configure it. And it can be used in FSX and make your flying more realistic. So if you fly with a squadron, they may require it. So it's good to know how to set up your radio so you can actually fly a multiplayer using radios. Let's start by configuring uh, the actual FSX so that we can transmit. Transmit uh, using a push to talk. And another function that we need is the receive all. So let's go to the control and select the button and key tab. Now, at the top here, you want to select the controller that you're going to use for your push to talk. In my case, I use the X55 uh, stick. I have a specific button that I want to use. And in the push to talk, you need to go down to the multiplayer function. Now, you will see here it says transmit voice start and transmit voice stop you need to have those two configured in order to have the push to talk function. In my case, I put it on my stick and I use a button on my stick, but be aware that uh, if you're using a uh, multi-way multi -way type button, it may not work. So it does not work with all types of buttons. So it's, you'll need to do some uh, experimenting. So the first thing you do is start with the transmit start. And I, like I said, I'm gonna use my Rhino stick I'm going to create a new assignment. And while in the box, I depress my button. So now I took my button 5, which happens to be right on my stick. And now it is configured. Now we need to configure the transmit uh, stop. Same process, new assignment. And we use the exact same button. But now this time, notice how do action when key is released. That needs to be checked. And that will ensure that when you're transmitting and you release the transmit button, it will stop transmitting. So now we have the push to talk configured for our button five. Now the next one you want to configure is the listen all. Now the listen all allows you to, let's say for example, you have the COM2 selected, but the tower calls you on COM1. If you have the listen all on, you will hear the calls from the tower and you can switch to COM1 to talk to them. And the way we configure the listen all is you select once again your controller type. In my case, I, I have a Tartarus. And uh, let's go to the radios. And the one that we want to uh, select is the receive all. It looks like I have it assigned already. I'll change that. So the COM radio receive all, you may have control shift Y, which I believe is the default, but I'm using it for something else. Now, the, the Razer Tartarus, uh, if you don't know what that is, it's an additional uh, device that you can plug into your computer and it gives you a whole bunch of new programmable keys that you can use. So if you're running out of room on your joystick and you wanna put some functions that you use once in a while, that is perfect for that and it's not that expensive. So to configure the COM radio receive all, same process, select the COM radio receive all, new assignment, press the button that you want to program, and click OK, and that's it. And we have that configured, and now we can use push to talk and receive all in FSX. The next part I wanna cover is when you're going into multiplayer mode. Now, in order to use multiplayer mode, you have to have some configuration in place. In multiplayer mode, once you open it up, you go to your network settings. I recommend setting it up to 128 uh, kilobits per second. It is set to lower than that, but it, that's the setting uh, my, my squadron use, and it works really well. 
the port range, do not change this unless you're actually connecting to a server that runs those ports or you're deciding to host with those ports. Leave the default ports unless you're told to do otherwise. This is the important part for you to uh, use voice communication. This has to be enabled. And that's your client side. Now, it said client, so there must be a server setting. So let's go and uh, pretend we're going to host. Obviously, if you're not hosting, you do not need to use that setting. Let me go into the hosting session. And you got to get past the where you start providing a, uh, a session to host. OK, and let's say that we, we're hosting a session with real weather. OK, so let's go into our session. This is where I want to get to. And here, if you're hosting and you want people to use radios, this must be enabled. And you select the Always Activate for All Players. And this here, I'm not quite sure what it does here. But it, anyways, this is required in order for the radios to work on the host side. If the host does not have this checked, the radios will not work. And uh, now let's jump in the plane and take a look to see uh, how the radio works in FSX uh, VRS Superbug and how we use it. Okay, let's look at the radios on the plane. I just finished starting my aircraft and uh, left, left out the radio part so we could discuss it. The first thing I normally do is, uh, well, let's, let's walk through it. So you see here there's a COM1 and a COM2. COM1 will control which channel you have selected on COM1 and COM2 will control which channel you have selected on COM2. Generally, COM1 is used for tower, uh, talking to the carrier, whereas COM2 is more in between flight uh, communication. On COM1, I normally have uh, the ATIS to find out which runways are active and uh, and on COM2, when I fly with this squadron I fly with, generally we're on channel 5. Now one thing that's important to note here is that these volumes do not control the volume. But if you don't turn them on, the radio will not work. So you have to turn them on. Now remember we were talking about a listen all. So the first thing I usually do is I select COM2. And I'll put it to my channel 5 so I'm ready to go. And on COM1, I will scroll down to channel 1. Now notice I hear nothing. And that's because I do not have my uh, listen, receive all turned on. And that's why it's important to have it. Because in this case here, I should be hearing the ATIS. So that's one way to make sure you have the, your receive all turned on. So let me press my button 03 that we configured. Notice how I'm hearing the, uh, the ATIS, but I do have channel 2 selected. So even though it's coming in on channel 1, I can hear it on channel 2. And all you have to do when you want to transmit, you just select the channel you want to transmit on. And let me turn that off here. For example, you know, I want to transmit on channel 2 and talk to the tower. I would use my button 5 that I've programmed and talk to the tower. Conversely, if I want to talk to my flight, I would press channel 5 on COM2 and use my push to talk to talk to my flight. So I hope this uh, video is helpful to you and I uh, hope you enjoy using the radios on FSX as much as I do. Have a great day and thanks for listening. If you liked the video, please uh, subscribe or and uh, hit like. See you later.